Uh, and so welcome, welcome to the official launch of Historic Paint Colors of Newfoundland and Labrador. We're very delighted. This is the culmination of a very long kind of project. So it's nice that it's finally uh, getting up and ready for the painting uh, season. Uh, my name is Dale Jarvis. I'm the Executive Director at Heritage NL. And with me is Andrea O'Brien, who has been kind of the lead researcher on the, the paint project. Uh, and we're joined as well by Carrie Hodder with the Paint Shop. Um, Carrie, maybe I'll turn things over to you just to start, just to give us a bit of a, a, a background of the Paint Shop's involvement with this. Okay, well, the Paint Shop, um, as you may or may not know, is a Newfoundland-owned company. We've been around since 1975, so almost 50 years. Um, when this came to us and landed on our plates, we are like, yeah, well, we kind of really are the keepers of Newfoundland color, I guess, because once upon a time it was Templeton's that people would have gone to and, you know, checked out the historic paint colors with Heritage Newfoundland and Labrador, because you guys worked with them on it beforehand, I guess. And um, now that they're out of business, we seem like the perfect fit. And we're super happy that you chose us to kind of help out with this booklet and whatnot. It's something that we're all pretty proud of. And if anybody is out there thinking, I'd like to get one of these booklets for myself. They're available in all paint shop locations in Newfoundland and Labrador. And as we are getting ready for the exterior painting season, uh, this is the perfect time to launch it. Of course, pretty much everywhere else in Canada, they're probably already at their exterior <laughs> painting projects, but not here in Newfoundland. We don't start those kinds of things until May around here. So this is the perfect time to do it. And uh, thanks guys for thinking of us and for having us be a part of it. It's, it's really an honor. Yeah, and it, it's really nice to have Benjamin Moore uh, involved with this. Uh, Benjamin Moore as a company has been doing uh, heritage paint charts for a, a long time. Um, and I think one of the challenges uh, for people who want to have historically accurate paint colors is that a lot of those palettes or, or color charts are based on architecture that happens somewhere else in North America. So it might be American or it might be Western Canada. So it is really nice to kind of finally have an official Benjamin Moore color chart that is really based on uh, the buildings of Newfoundland and, and Labrador. So it's great to have uh, Benjamin Moore involved. And for instance, you know, Dory Buff was obviously one of the big colors in Newfoundland and Labrador for many years, uh, but there is no actual color called Dory Buff in the Benjamin Moore palette. So we have a slew of colors, I believe four in here that would be considered the traditional Dory Buff in Newfoundland and Labrador, like the Dorset Gold, uh, ro Roasted Sesame, Yellow Marigold, and Pumpkin Blush. Um, the Pumpkin Blush actually totally reminds me of my grandparents' house, um, out around the bay, that's exactly the same color that their house was when I was growing up. So it's interesting to see how, you know, even though these colors are still in our color palette today, they can be seen, you know, in Newfoundland and Labrador paint colors in our homes for the last hundred years or so. So maybe I'll, what I'll do is I'm going to turn things over now to uh, Andrea, and I'm going to get her to talk uh, a, a little bit just about the um, the, the research that went into it, and, and also to introduce the, uh, the website component, because not only is it a, a chart that you can go into the paint chart and get, but there's also uh, supplemental information online that delves into a bit more of the, the history of the paint chart, or the paint palette, rather. Um, so what I'm going to do uh, is I'm going to share a screen here and uh, show you what the website looks like. All right, Carrie, can you see that there as you? I certainly can. Perfect, okay. Yeah. So Andrea, do you wanna introduce this? Yeah, and our website, basically the, the front page of our website is, it's basically uh, the brochure uh, duplicated in a, in a digital way online. Uh, the website itself is historicpaintnl.ca. Um, and as you mentioned, let's scroll down this way. Dale has a, Mac. There we go. There we go. <laughs> so as you mentioned, this started off with a lot of research. Uh, myself, Dale, and our former colleague, Michael Philpott, we did a lot of uh, kind of a deep dive into archives and online resources, uh, a lot of written resources to, to kind of trace back to that history of color in Newfoundland. And a lot of the earliest things that we found 
uh, were, say, advertisements in newspapers for uh, a store or a merchant firm that had gotten in a shipment of a particular type of paint. Even, and before that, it was they were getting in shipments of um, like lime and ochre and those kind of things were being sold. So, and we found diaries that people wrote about what color they might have painted the banister or their stairs. So we did a lot of researching uh, those types of archival sources. And then once we got past a certain uh, time period, uh, when color photography came in, then we started looking at some of the uh, older um, archival photos from 1950s era. And that's how we kind of traced, uh, I guess, the evolution of, of the use of paint in Newfoundland and Labrador. Um, and in the beginning, there was white. That was what people were using. Yeah. You know, this, this uh, idea that Newfoundland always had really colorful houses, I think is, we, f we forget that that is kind of a modern, a really a post-World War II, yes. uh, you know, advance in, in the use of color. In, in the beginning, it really was white uh, with, um, you know, uh, uh, red ochre, red ochre yeah, and white know. lead paints. Uh, and then over time, we started to see other colors, uh, the, the red and yellow ochres. Uh, for example, this is a photograph from uh, oh. Port Union, one of our registered heritage districts. Um, so really, for the first several hundred years of painting in the province, the palette was really pretty limited. You know, it was white or red, and then maybe with a little bit of yellow, and and then we started to see some other colors uh, start to start to creep yeah. in. And this picture is a good example of the different hues you would have using those natural um, substances like ochre, because people would mix these with oils, so like seal oil or fish oil, and the amount of powder they put in, the amount of oil they put in, affected what. The color was going to be what what the shade was going to be so you had all kinds of shades of red ochre all kinds of shades of yellow ochre and um in the case of uh the ochres with oil they probably did stain pretty well they probably adhered to wood pretty well but in the case of your lime uh that you mix with water people will call it whitewashing that had to be done every single year yeah yeah and, you know, these days you can go to the paint shop and you can color match things like that just wasn't really an option, you know, depending on the recipe you were using and the type of uh, pigment you were mixing with your materials, you might have a radically different uh, type of color, even even deciding upon like what is uh, kind of a red ochre shed, uh, you know, historically there was a whole wide range of shades of red and oranges Brown. and browns, um, and it just really depended on local conditions and yeah. local uh, local and materials. Mixtures, and we kind of touched upon St. John's, and St. John's one time had a very dark muted uh, color palette. Um, one because that's the paint that was available but also St. John's burned a lot of coal. So that's what people were using to heat their houses. So if you had a house that was whitewashed, uh, that was gonna get dirty pretty quick. So a lot of it was basically, you know, it was still the aesthetics of you want a nice looking house, but you're gonna to have to put a dark paint on that house to keep it nice looking. Mm. Even, the, even the business of, uh, you know, painting trims a different color. Uh, there's a great example in this building, that very uh, kind of typical dark, chromium green that you would see in old St. John's, you'll notice that everything is painted the same color. You know, it, it really wasn't until kind of mid 20th century that you started to see two color paint schemes in, in urban houses. Um, and nowadays, you know, you can have three or four, you know, a main body and all kinds of different accent trim uh, colors. You know, again, a fairly modern uh, kind of uh, version of, of painting in uh, in St. John's. Yeah, and you see some of those earthy tones here is a picture of Barter's Hill. You see a lot of those kind of uh, red ochre tones being used there. And uh, this picture here, Brazil Square and Casey Street, you're starting to see some of those little pastels come in. And the pastel story is great. I love the pastel story. Um, around, uh, say, the mid 1900s after World War II, Painting technology had changed to the point that you could start to get uh, a lot, a, a bigger variety of colors uh, through shops and um, different retailers. 
And there's kind of a myth that, you know, all Newfoundland outports were kind of isolated and they wouldn't have gotten these collars. In a lot of cases, collar came to the outports first before it came to St. John's. And there were boats that were going all around the island at that time. And they were delivering shipments of paints from the bigger merchants in St. John's and bringing them to smaller merchants in the outports. And you saw like this pastel revolution that happened <laughs> in Newfoundland in, in the mid uh, 1900s. And um, I mean, you see all these nice salmon colors, these mint greens, these really vibrant yellows. And I also love the trend of people painting their houses two different colors. Yeah. In a way, it kind of mimics what you saw happening in kind of suburbs from that time, where people would paint, uh, say, the bottom of their house one color and then the front eave of a modern, at that time, bungalow, a different color, mm. or the front gable of it. And people were doing this in outports with their old biscuit box houses. They were doing this two-tone effect. And there's a great picture of La Manche there, because you can see a very uh, traditional color scheme with the very dark... Uh, green on the left and then you see the really nice powder blue and salmon house there on the right uh, so people were they, and they didn't have to worry about the coal soot so they could use these very nice bright colors and they were starting to be used in some of the newer subdivisions that were being built in St. John's as well. But these are the colors of everyone's nan's house around the bay like <laughs> these are you know i think there's a lot of nostalgia attached to some of these kind of classic mm -hmm. pastel colors from the from the 60s and 70s mm -hmm. um and the, and some of those colors are you know are kind of coming back into vogue now which is kind of interesting to see that everything that is old yeah. is is new again and those colors weren't just exterior there was houses at the insides were completely uh, mint green or yeah. they were completely pink Sea I had an uncle who yeah. even painted his phone <laughs> like he painted everything inside of his house the same color a uh, great, a great uncle yes. so, so that Rose brings us up popular. go ahead Carrie Dusty Rose was quite popular Dusty when I was Rose, growing up right? yeah. every house, either it, some on the exterior or interior somebody had they all had Dusty Rose somewhere in the house Dusty Rose and you would have the the toilet bath sets that were all the same color, you know, dusty rose or, uh, you know, that lovely kind of seafoam green uh, toilets that you, you don't see anymore. Um, but that period also as well, kind of the end of the 60s and early 70s, that's where uh, in St. John's, we start to see what we know today as the jelly bean, uh, jelly bean palette. And, and this is always a great debate, you know, when tourists arrive, uh, you know, and they want to see Jelly Bean Row, like where do they go? Um, and there and, is no actual Jelly Bean Row. Yeah. <laughs> there are many houses and that are colorful, many rows that are colorful, but there's no Jelly Bean Row. And there's lots of, there's lots of different theories about, you know, which kind of were the first, uh, the first buildings to be uh, painted up like this in these new colors. Uh, yes. And Andrea has this lovely uh, booklet that was done in the late 60s. Yeah, as part of our research, uh, this was one thing that we used. It's called Fix Up and Paint Up St. John's Water Street Improvement from the Downtown Development Corporation. And this was actually um, part of a study for a pedestrian mall in downtown in the late 1960s, uh, which when our latest pedestrian mall started up, people had referred back to the previous pedestrian mall. But part of it, when we were doing it, we found this color scheme. You see that? Yeah. This is the color scheme that was attached to this, um, to this study. And basically what happened later on was um, the organization that came before us, the St. John's Heritage Foundation, uh, they had started a project to fix up a row of houses on Gower Street. And, um, and I've spoken to people that were around at that time, and they kind of think, they kind of agree with me that we're probably on the right track, that when that row of houses was fixed up, it was parts of this color scheme that was in that study that ended up on those houses. And then it was just a ripple effect when you had, you know, these colorful houses in the middle of, you know, these very, you know, dark red and dark green houses. And then they saw their neighbor had a really nice light palette on theirs. It just kind of started to spread out. Mm -hmm. And so we went from having those very kind of dark tones in St. John's to having basically every color you can possibly think of in St. John's. My, my house in St. John's is uh, kind of like this 
a carrot stick orange there with a purple door. Actually, that's pretty a close combination right there, that berry fizz and the right carrot stick the there. Uh, that's pretty similar to my house in, in St. John's. So yeah, we've seen that we've seen colors kind of change and evolve over time. Uh, one of the things that we also wanted to cover with the chart was not just the exterior of buildings, but also give some examples of uh, historic interiors of buildings, um, because at times they were really uh, brightly painted uh, and really great use of color uh, on the inside of traditional Newfoundland and Labrador houses as well. Yeah, and a lot of your colors you would have seen in, in institutional buildings or public buildings uh, didn't uh, always have um, like wallpaper. A lot of a lot of houses would have had wallpaper really early on, and then when they got certain technology that they could put on their walls, you know, pre the pre gyprock kind of the sheet, ten test the, kind of ten yep. test, then they could start going wild with the paint inside. But a lot of institutional buildings already had uh, exposed wood on the interiors and there are traditional colors that would have went with those types of buildings depending on what their use was. So this is a really great example of the interior of the Mosquito uh, Schoolhouse there in Bristol's Hope, which has been very lovingly uh, restored in the community. Uh, so the website also gives you some, uh, some suggestions on choosing colors. Um, some examples of different uh, color palettes, uh, and then all the colors that are in the physical chart are also presented on the website as well. Um, for those who uh, want a bit more historical information, there's also information on like how to research uh, historic paint colors in your house. So if you have a house and you want to think about, okay, how do we get back and find out what some of those original colors were, there's some tips and tricks there. Um, also information on just uh, painting tips for how you can go about uh, painting your structures. Uh, this is something that I, that I know the paint shop can also assist you with if you have questions about application and, and, and preparation of surfaces, you know, you can ask the shops um, as well. So lots of information there uh, for people who are interested in Newfoundland history and lots of great ideas for all those uh, home decorators and painters who are thinking about their summer summer projects. Yeah, for the DIYers out there, it's, it's a really great little booklet. And like I mentioned, you can pick it up at any paint shop. And when you go in, you might be, you know, a little bit weary when you see how bright some of the colors are, but they are absolutely gorgeous. And don't be afraid of a pop of color. You know, you don't have to go orange and purple like Dale has done on his house. <laughs> but even just think about the front door, adding a pop of color there. Um, I painted my front door corn silk last year and I painted the inside of the door a navy blue and it looks absolutely gorgeous. Um, my brother and father just put new stores or, you know, fishing sheds, um, right, hugging the water's coastline uh, uh, in our hometown of St. Bernard's, and they used some of these colors because this booklet was in the works when they were like, oh, well, what color will we paint it? And I was like, we need to do one of these historic colors. So <laughs> they went with um, corn silk on one of them and bluebell on the other, and it's absolutely gorgeous. It's such a nice beachy feel kind of, uh, and it really, really fits in with, uh, you know, the historic Newfoundland and Labrador. So uh, anyone at the paint shop, if you want to stop in and get some advice on, you know, how to choose these colors, make sure you get the right one for your house. You can absolutely do that. And uh, another thing that people are doing a lot more recently that we kind of encourage is to paint your siding. You can do that. You don't have to just have clapboard to have these gorgeous colors on there. You can actually paint siding. And we do have a list of um, uh, color safe, uh, colors that are safe for siding to paint as well because certain dark colors don't go well with some vinyl siding they will buckle and whatnot but if you're in the mood to give a whole new look to your house you can absolutely do that and just stop into any of the paint shops and one of our experts they'll be happy to help you great and if people want uh, again if they want copies of uh, these booklets you can go into your local uh, local paint shop you can go to historicpaintnl.ca. Uh, Andrea, we have a number of copies in our office that we are going to be sending out to municipalities. Um, so your local town uh, office might eventually have a copy of this uh, as well. And if you have any questions about, you know, kind of the historical side of, uh, of paints, all our contact information is at the, on the website, historicpaintnl.ca. So I think with that, 
uh, that kind of wraps up our little launch. Uh, so again, thank you to the paint shop. Thank you, Carrie, for the, uh, the work that you've done kind of bringing this all together. And um, I'll let you have the, have the final word. Thank you guys so much for including us in this. Um, we take great pride in being a part of this project. Uh, as you say, you know, we've been around forever in Newfoundland and Labrador and we continue, we plan on continuing to be around for a lot longer. So to be the keepers of the colors in Newfoundland and Labrador, it certainly really is a great honor for us. Thank you. All right. Okay. Thanks all. Get painting. Happy painting. <laughs>